Hello and welcome to this video multiplayer guide for Japan where I want to show you how to play Japan in Hearts of Iron for multiplayer and this video is especially about China how to beat China as Japan so let's jump right into it so at first we are gonna look at the focuses we are gonna go for the Purge the Code of Affection which is the historical route for Japan and for industry let's just build civilian factories for now because this guy is only for China I will build uh, civilian factories for the wall video and yeah, don't forget to stop trading with the USA for oil uh, for research we can go for construction basic machine tools doctrine superior firepower because we will rely on the artillery and electronic mechanical engineering uh, I won't focus on the Navy here so usually you might want to research destroyer tools first as Japan uh, but here I won't focus on the navy so I just put it all the navy on one ship uh, but I will still make some ships to so it will take my steel so I can like properly demonstrate how many factories you can have because I will buy steel from Manchukuo in Germany uh, so as our production we go for 8 on guns 3 on the support equipment and 8 or 7 on artillery as soon as we get more factories for now I just went for 7, 2 and 6 so that's everything for now so now my army we have some base divisions it can be used as garrisons or for the front where we just want to hold in China which is the front with Shanzi uh, you can delete some of these divisions I wanted to keep them uh, to be able to send the most possible number of volunteers to Spain because with more units you can usually send more volunteers so if the Spain gets a lot of land in the start you can send more volunteers which is better because you can get more XP but uh, especially these horses you can just delete them if you want um, they aren't gonna be needed for anything yeah, I will just delete the tanks as well because and the motorized because we won't use them here uh, usually you can't even use these tanks in the multiplayer because they are space marines and the marines will stay in Taiwan and from there they can make some landings into China later as you can see I put it my main army between the two supply zones so they will never get not enough supply when training and yeah now we just go in uh, you can put the more strict uh, policy on korea um, against the partisans if you want if you want i haven't done it here but you can do that and now i'm just taking care of the navy not too important here against China we will uh, 
send our main force on strike strike force to make sure China cannot land us and we will use four battleships for support of our land troops so now we went for guide for Zaibatus now we are just waiting for the Spanish Civil War to send the volunteers in as you can see I trained my navy here because that's what you usually do to get some naval XP and I go for mechanical computing to get some research boost as well so now we're pretty much good to go even on 5 speed I just put a scavenger and some other traits to our generals because we have enough command power anyway so why not and now I think I will just speed up the video a little bit so you don't have to wait now i'm just assigning generals going for the next focus national mobilization law uh, one important thing here is that you can delay your focus to get 150 pp for silent workhorse so you just delay it by like seven days you get the pp you take the workhorse and then you then you take the focus so you can have like do more PP it isn't that important but it makes sense to do it so the Spanish Civil War war has started so I am sending three divisions and air volunteers as well now um, it's usually quite messy to manage the planes because you have to lower their numbers I think it can be fine and we are now going for the next focus for the research slot and we're just gonna use the plan in Spain to make sure our divisions are always fighting as research we can research new artillery and don't forget to use the decision of imperial conference for uh, the pri prioritize the steel for guns to make sure you get four more military factories and some boost and you can put the factories on guns eight on guns three on support I think nine on artillery is fine and the rest which is gonna be like three you can put them on CAS and one factory on motorized to make sure we have enough motorized and to make sure we have some CAS uh, for China so yeah, with your new research slot you can start researching air doctrine and we still just grind in China uh, from the XP which we got in uh, Spain uh, we can improve our divisions add some artillery to them so let's do that and our goal is the 14-4 template which means 4 artillery and 14 infantry and support our artillery 
uh, engineers, re, uh, the motorized recon and signal company if we have enough support equipment and another important one is the logistic company because in this build I don't build the port in uh, in the Dailan or in the East Hebei because I don't think you need it I think you can push China without it and save some factory time which can be very useful but it's important to get the logistics even more it's even more important than the signals to have enough supply if you don't have enough supply always make sure you have enough by sending some of the divisions to another supply zone in the Manchukuo because if you don't have enough supply you get attrition and with attrition you lose equipment so as the next th uh, thing to choose we will go for free trade and because it's a multiplayer game probably uh, you can ask Germany for trade backs which means that if you buy something from him he will buy something from you and by that you don't lose factories and you still get the materials you want and now I am using the XP from, Ch from Spain to improve my marine template as well I will go for the 14 for a marine template there and you can see now the free trade and we went for the nationalist for industry and now the national defense state I will speed up a li little bit again so we are still just farming in the Spain making some new divisions so we will have 24 of our good main front divisions and then we need 10 more good divisions which will be partly marines and partly the main front divisions for the landings so now we have the marine tel template almost ready Well, just make sure your divisions in Spain are always attacking so you are always getting the XP now I just put in some admirals to my fleet and I'm getting it ready for the war for the focus, we now focus mainly on industry, artillery, and the land and air doctrine. And now I put in some trades for the admirals. And I'm still improving the templates. Uh, I like to use the divisions from Manchukuo and Mengukuo for garrisoning Japan just in case that something unexpected happens to have some presence in Japan and not get capitulated immediately and as you can see I put it some more factories on S now I have 9 on guns, 9 on artillery, 3 on support and 3 on cast. And the next one will go on motorized and I'm already going for the liaison conference so 3 more focuses to war with China um, you don't have to allow the Mariana regions because they own some of your core territory so it's not worth it to let them do the provisional government 
and now we can go for one more inter service rivalry the imperial conference uh, i went here for prioritize army aircraft construction which would be a big mistake in a normal game because you want to go for the naval aircraft construction uh, to have a boost for the zeros um, in this game it was just kind of a misclick by me but uh, I should have gone for the uh, grand draft exceptions for some factory output or for the indiscriminate draft to take more manpower depends on you if you want rather more manpower or more people i think the people are probably better uh, in this case at japan so we are still researching mainly industry and uh, now you can add artillery too for research as well because we have a lot of artillery in our in our divisions so artillery too will definitely help us and i have 10 divisions prepared on taiwan uh, i will prepare the naval invasions for them so as you can see all our spanish divisions are veterans now and the Marco Polo bridge incident is almost done. So now I will change the template for my bed divisions as well. I will make them 20 with the infantry and put some support artillery for them to give them some soft attack and we can go for infantry expert now. My friend is playing China here so as you can see he is delaying the focus the Marco Polo focus to give him some more time you can delay it by 15 days and we are ready with everything now just waiting for the war to start uh, as our next focus we go for the spiritual mobilization to get back our manpower we don't really care that we don't have manpower now um, you can put some in the training divisions and then just release them from training by that you can still keep some manpower but because we do the spiritual mobilization now and not before we get some more uh, time for china because we are faster against the china so he gets less time to prepare and we get more time to kill him until the allies can somehow help him if the war would have gone badly so as i said he's delaying the focus by a bit you don't have to worry yeah he's gonna pay for that and we still just building civilian factories because we want a good industry so let's go in call all our puppets to make sure we can attack from their territory and we don't attack right away we just wait for the marco polo bridge incident to disappear in decisions we will always spend 25 pp on the marco polo and slowly get rid of that so if we would be 
super precise, we can get rid of that in 120 days, and then we will attack. So escalate the war in China. As you can see now, I don't have supply in that zone, so I'm just gonna send some of my divisions out from there. Uh, my friend is trying to farm some army XP, which are really important for China in there. So I'm gonna put one good division in that style to make sure um, he's not getting too much XP and losing a lot of org and equipment. Uh, that's the reason why we are not attacking China right away because that would give him some XP and if you give China enough XP then pushing it can be really ugly because then he gets all the buffs like War of National Liberation War uh, which give him plus 10% attack, plus 10% defense so we want to avoid that and starve him out of army XP if possible. So now i um, just waiting for the 100, 120 days to get rid of the Marco Polo bridge incident. So we are still just preparing, we don't have to use our air now we just wait for the marco polo bridge and as you can see um, the first place where we will attack is on the airport near beijing because if we get the airport our planes can support our troops much better because it's, it is right in the center of the air zone in there so now we are just defending from Shanxi attacks and from Chinese attacks if he wants to take some XP and waiting for the Marco Polo bridge debuff to disappear. As our next focus we go for the zero. So now all our focuses will focus on the zero. Uh, you can go for the dockyard or the other air focuses, depends on you. Uh, and now I am trying to get enough PP for another Imperial Conference decision. Don't forget to do them, they are really important. And uh, man uh, the Menguko usually builds an airport in its territory with its focus, so you can put some airplanes uh, in the Mengukuo airport as well to get air superiority. So our production is still going great, everything is fine, we have green air as well, very nice. Uh, why we are rushing the zero focus it's because we will get the zeros which are really powerful and with the air xp from china we can upgrade them a lot uh, and if we have enough numbers with them we can be a challenge for the allied air in the pacific and we can use them on our aircraft carriers as well. So now I am doing some naval invasions and I started attacking in the north. Uh, it's important to plan your attacks at first so you get the planning bonus. Um, yeah, I was kind of unfortunate here with the landings because only the none of the marine divisions was used to attack only the, the other, other divisions and uh, if you push the Chinese like this 
usually you get some overruns because the enemy divisions are gonna be encircled or they aren't as fast as your divisions so you can just overrun them which is very good so now because the Chinese player was already prepared near Shanghai for me I decided to land in the Sindaho uh, to make sure I can push the river in there so defending the river is common Chinese strategy but if you push the Sindaho fast uh, you can kill him from there uh, why I attack the Shanghai before and now I'm trying it the last time uh, it's because if you take Shanghai you destroy the infrastructure in the Nanjing which is the Chinese capital and sometimes by this uh, you can starve the Chinese out of supply Either you just destroy their infrastructure or if you land then you can even take and fight there and destroy the infrastructure even more. So that's great. And it is a distraction for him as well. When I'm pushing in the north I will do a naval invasion in the south so he has to move his camera a lot and uh, I have more chance for some overruns. So now he's still defending the river. I will just prepare the attack and attack near the shore because there we have the shore bombardment. And now let's do our naval invasion as well. Our 14 for marines are no match for the Chinese, we are gonna land with no problems, even make some overruns when landing. And now the Chinese player has to retreat from the river, at least in the north, or else he might get encircled. As you can see, I I yeah, am marching into Shanxi as well because if you can then just capitulate Shanxi, you get some free guns and you don't have to care about so many annoying units from the AIs. Yeah, as you can see I tried to encircle the Chinese player here but he last landed well so I wasn't able to encircle any units. Uh, this is another important tip when pushing into China when he, he has a lot of divisions stacked on top of each other just attack them with like one or, or two of your divisions uh, he has almost no attack at least in the start so your divisions will keep attacking for a long time and he has 20 divisions in that one tile stack uh, and he, he cannot really retreat them or he can but the retreating is much slower and this makes it much harder to keep the front for the Chinese player if you're just always pinning his, uh, the places where he has a lot of troops. So now I'm just preparing the next battle plan and I'm trying to capitulate Shanzi. There we go, Chinese capitulated. Don't forget to move your air into the new air zone to keep the support of your troops. And I'm pushing into the communist China to capitulate the communist China as well. Uh, as you can see the China retreated to the next river line so I will just take the territory and push in there. We capitulate Communist China, which really helps, and now we can go into Sibei Sanma. Um, usually, the big river is the most tough to push, but it's actually one of the last Chinese defenses. Maybe 
The last one is near Chongqing, but if he has to retreat into defending only around Chongqing, then you really can't lose anymore. Because in the cities on the big river, he has a lot of military factories in, maybe like half of his industry. So if you can take them, then there is no way for China to come back. He can stall the fights for some time in the Chongqing if he already got rid of the debuffs he has in the start. But you can't really, really lose. So as you can see, I'm trying to capitulate Sibei Sanma and I am preparing some attacks in the big river. I think it's called Yellow River, but I'm not sure. And so I'm not pushing in the mountains um, in the east, just uh, in the places where are the hills or plains. I'm trying to avoid the mountains because when you push into mountains you get a lot of attrition and you lose a lot of equipment. Yeah, so I just capitulate Sibain Sanma and now we can go to Chongqing from the Sibain Sanma. And because of that China had to abandon even the, the big river. So now we can take most of his industry and push into the Chongqing as well. So now we have pretty much won. It's just a matter of time. And as you can see, it's around 1939. So we killed China in a bit more than a year. As I said, he can still stall the situation near Chongqing, but it won't really help him too much. So thanks for watching, and if you like this video, leave a like, and subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in the next video below.